Hello everybody, you have tuned in to Eric Jose on Making a Murderer on YouTube. I cover virtually any aspect of Making a Murderer. I go over the evidence, the documents, the photos. So if you'd like, stay tuned and in the future I'll have many more videos besides the one you're about to see. Hello out there to all the justice seekers for Brendan. Well, today we got finally Mr. Schimmel filed his uh, request for an on bank review. And, uh, well, you know, tomorrow Brad, you know, shimmy sham, playing his hits. Brendan confessed voluntarily, uh, you know, grandfatherly tones, no specific promises. He was given food and drink. He, you know, <laughs> just same old stuff over and over. And claims that what the judge, the, what the majority uh, decided, that it that it changes the a the AEDPA, and I mean, <laughs> couldn't be any clearer. I think they're defining what the a the AEDPA means. That no special care was given here. This kid was highly suggestible and was essentially spoon fed the pop points, and was left to ramble multiple times until they could take a little bit from each one and put together a narrative to convict him. So, obviously, Brad Schimmel is going to be in this to the end. He's not going to let it go. He's, you know, he's going to fight tooth and nail as long as he has to, obviously. So, nothing can be done. But getting back to what his chances are, the chances are that, he, that these things get denied. That the very few of these ever get, you know, actually approved and, and actually taken by the court to be reviewed by the, you know, the entire panel of judges. So what do we have? We have him filing this document today and I'm going to go through some of it. And like I said, I've already just summarized some of it for you. He basically goes through all the reasons why Brendan's confession is entirely fine. Nothing wrong with it. And you know, same old stuff. He always says same old thing. It's the same old shimmy sham. The panel majority has rewritten the rules for juvenile interrogation in multiple significant ways. Hamilton J. dissenting. This is Judge Hamilton. Conflict with numerous decisions from the Supreme Court, this court and other courts of appeal. The panel majority also depart from a string of this court's habeas decisions involving confessions by juveniles who were denied relief despite being subjected to far greater pressures than Brendan Dassey was, in Hamilton's opinion. These inter- and intra-circuit conflicts involve questions and ex of exceptional importance because they will make the work of law enforcement considerably more difficult. I really disagree with that. And here's why. I mean, what are you, what's going on in your state, Brad, where you need to be interrogating children like this? Like, this is so important that you need to be in, interrogating impressionable young adults and children like this, that you need to be standing up this vigorously for this. Huh? Okay. I gotta say, I've had to have, I've had to do a pretty, you know, crash course in what the AEDPA guidelines are in determining uh, a false confession and particularly when determining one with a minor or somebody you know not able to really act for themselves fully so basically what it comes down to is there's this test that they call the totality of circumstances and whether or not because of the totality of the circumstances f to the defendant whether or not his will was overborne his free will was overborne and whether he was coerced into making the confession it's all about the overbearing of his free will okay that clearly happened here it may not have happened because they were slapping him around it may not have happened because they were making him promises it may not have happened because you know, all these other things. It may not have happened because of that. I think the reason why it happens with Brendan is the fact, like Laura Nyrider points out, number one, he saw a great deal of the, of basically the 
facts or and where things were found and all that being covered on the news media of course he was part of the you know this was happening to his family where he lived and of course he was watching the media and knew and was aware of many many things that were in the media okay then you take you then you look at the confessions where they're constantly feeding him the information that they want him to pair it back it's clear as day on the what is it, the February 27th interview Mark Weger literally says did you see any like any hands toes or arm or you know uh, anything like you know a belly or whatever literally parrots back the same things he said to him so I mean and it goes through all throughout that like like Laura Nyrider points out about how they give him plot points on March 1 they 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 say you know okay in the trailer and they like literally are saying, okay, they're putting him in the trailer because they know they need things to happen in the trailer. So they just get him talking about the trailer. Like, you know, it's just a plot point or whatever. And they're subtly feeding him information, kind of little things. And then other times they're just saying, oh, you know, if you lie to us, Brendan, we can't trust you. And da 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 da. Basically, that means whatever you just said was no good. You needed to go back to the drawing board. <laughs> so, yeah. With, with, with a kid like Brendan, who is very suggestible, if you basically just feed him plot points like that, making him believe that you want him to tell you a story, then he's going to fill in the gaps. He did it very unconvincingly. Like I said, the state, to pull its narrative together, had to draw from like four different you know uh, interviews with Brendan to kind of cherry pick the best bits of them because they didn't know they were they knew that they were making they knew that they were making Brendan make this up and they knew that it wasn't going to be the same every time you know what story was the same every time Brendan's story about coming home playing video games talking to Blaine's boss and da 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 da, da Stephen calls all, that story that story never changes that story is rock solid the only story that changes is that mess that Mark Wiegert and Tom Fassbender extract painfully from him yeah it's obvious anybody I mean if you don't see it in that interview go get your ears checked get a hearing aid uh, you know go get some some contacts or some specs you know and look again because they're seriously leading that kid down a path pretty much the whole time and if if the, if if he knew about Teresa being shot in the head, when they were saying, "Come on, Brendan, the head, the head, come on, we know there's something with the head, Brendan," he would have. If he knew anything about Teresa being shot in the head, he would have immediately offered it right there. He didn't. They had to tell him. That's critically critically bad for for Tom and and Mark. You know, Weegert and Fassbender. If he had knowledge of it, as much as he was trying to please them and trying to tell them what they wanted and trying to give them what they wanted, if he had that knowledge in his head when they were sitting there going over and over again and getting kind of agitated about it, come on, we know there's something with the head, Brendan, we know there's something with the head, and Brendan didn't know, and he guessed wrong, he kept kept guessing wrong. Anyway, it's just one thing. So, that's my issue here with with. with with Schimmel, he's just not taking into account any of these things that this kid was suggestible and his will was overborne. It was overborne certainly because, like the Laura Nyrider says, with with a kid like Brendan, a kid who's how she refers to him as a concrete thinker, who basically believes it takes idioms as actual literal statements. You know, like the truth will set you free. Not exactly a truthful statement, necessarily. It's it's speaking metaphorically of the fact that it'll set your your conscience and your soul at ease to tell the truth. But you may, in fact, still have issues in the immediate, you know, real world. <laughs> so, anyways... We're going to move into the next document now, and we'll come on back. The Wisconsin trial court held in a thorough opinion that Dassey's confession was voluntary. 
The Wisconsin Court of Appeals affirmed adopting the trial court's findings and summarizing the key points. The court evaluated in the confession's voluntariness on the totality of the circumstances, balancing Dassey's personal characteristics against the police pressures used to induce these statements. The court found that the investigators used normal speaking tones with no hectoring, threats of promises or leniency, and held that it was not coercive to encourage honesty or pro profess to know facts they actually did not have. But you're still not allowed to feed your suspect the information and have him parrot it back to you because he's suggestible. So, like I said, same old stuff from Schimmel. This is no different than the briefs that he wrote before the Seventh Circuit considered Brennan's case when he was writing, you know, briefs, you know, because he's the one that brought the appeal to the court, the appeal to the court. And so, you know, th th this document reads no different. And the thing is, is that it's not just one decision that, that he's facing here that he's lost. It's two. It's two decisions that have been made. And, I mean, he's acting like, oh my gosh, this is so out of out of bounds well you know what if it's so out of bounds how did two different courts do something that's so out of bounds <laughs> I, you know that's i mean that's the question you got to ask yourself and we all know these courts are very much <laughs> they they are very very intent on the fact of not overturning a previous court's decision or or, or to do anything in regards to a previous court's decision unless they truly feel that there was just a glaring and obvious error made that they need to get involved. Otherwise, they generally just tend to accept that the precedent is sound. So, so I don't know. I mean, honestly, by what I understand, Schimmel, Schimmel's chance of getting this on bank review is not great. Uh, it's, I mean, I would say that it's really, really low chance, but hey, you know, Schimmel kind of tends to pull a rabbit out of his hat here and there. So let's just keep our fingers crossed and see what happens. But like I said, it's been said that it's, it's hard. It's, it's easier to get in front of the Supreme court than it is to get a non-bank review. So there you go. Um, we're going to now move into the final document and then it will come on back. In any event, the majority's characterization of the Wisconsin Court of Appeals opinion is patently unfair. The Wisconsin Court of Appeals explicitly based its conclusion on the trial court's findings, and the trial court's opinion was thorough, quoting many of the same statements as the majority. Quoting, honesty is the only thing that will set you free. Uh, quoting, honesty here is the thing that's going to help you. Um, quoting, we are both in your corner. We're on your side, and I can go to bat for you. Appellate courts, including this court, regularly adopt lower courts' analyses. So basically, he's just saying that no matter what in this, that the Wisconsin Court of Appeals was basically just doing what n courts normally do and going along with what the previous court's, you know, findings were without questioning them too much. He's that's, you know, essentially what he's saying. So, one thing I'll say there, no mention, I mean, he just goes through, he just goes through the same old things, like I said, about the grandfatherly tones, uh, no specific promises, and all that stuff. He talks about it over and over and over and over. What he never talks about is the fact that the, 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 the information was fed to Brendan. He doesn't want to touch that. He doesn't even want to mention it because he feels like mentioning it would validate it. And, I mean, not that it needs his validation, but I'm... The fact that he doesn't mention those things, those those plot points were clearly offered to Brendan, just the way that Nye Ryder says they were. And the fact that I don't see any mention of him even trying to explain that, really. Now, I, I yeah, I mean, I mean, never have I ever seen him try to explain that. So, I don't know. Anyways, all we can do at this point is wait and see what the Seventh Circuit obviously decides here. But the probabilities say that he's going to get denied. And if he gets denied, then he has a certain amount of time to appeal it to the Supreme Court. And then within a certain amount of time, 
we're going to know whether or not the Supreme Court is even going to like bring it in and, and, and actually put it on the docket. So that's kind of where we're at. But hopefully, my hope is, is that if the on bank is declined, then that ends the business with the Seventh Circuit Court. That ends that ends all proceedings regarding Brendan Dassey in the state of Wisconsin with the with the Seventh Circuit Court, and we may possibly see Brendan's bond get granted. That's just a hope, obviously, but you know it could happen. As I've surmised, as I've said before, I've surmised that I think that the Seventh Circuit Court didn't want to let Brendan go right now because they didn't want to be in the middle of the media circus that would have resulted especially since there was still business pending regarding the case in their court. So, I don't know. It's just kind of something I th that I think may be an, an issue. I know that these, you know, judges, they're not they're not trying to look for camera time and fame really. They're they want to, they got enough to do as it is. They got all these cases that they got to go through and and lots of things to read and lots of things to consider. So, you know, having media and stuff buzzing around and causing, you know, headaches is not exactly what they want so anyways that's just my kind of thoughts on it possibly possible theory of why they did why they denied his bond but like i said if the if the on bank gets denied then we'll know then if they if they decide to do like i just suggested so anyways that's about it folks as i said this whole thing was just a reuttering of the same things that he said before and you know no, nothing really new to see here, really, for the most part. So that's about it. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe. We'll see ya.